Across the universe, creation waits for something it cannot quite name. The fulfillment of some age-old prophecy or distant promise. Across the world, people wait for something we cannot quite conceive. Peace that seems improbable. Justice that is always just out of reach. Across our cities and our streets, our neighbors wait for something many dare not speak aloud. Rest from relentless busyness and companionship in a world of connected isolation. Waiting is hard. Waiting is boring. Waiting is exhausting. Wake up, beloved. Wake up and hear the story of our God. Wake up and see God's love at work in your life. Wake up and share good news with a world that is tired of waiting. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. This, the reign of God has come near. Hope is within reach. And this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, who wakes us from our sleep. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I invite you to remain seated or to kneel as you are comfortable. God of disruption, we confess that our lives are not in line with your plan for us. We treat this world as something to master instead of something in which to marvel. We judge our neighbors by their usefulness to us, ignoring opportunities to care for them. We use busyness to fill the voids in our lives rather than paying attention to our griefs and our longings. We settle for the status quo, rather than yearning for the abundant life you offer. Disrupt us from our complacency. Wake us up from our slumber. Open our eyes to the wonders you work in our world and in our lives. Open our hearts to a deeper love for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Open our arms to embrace the grieving and to seek consolation for our grief. Open our minds to hope for a world that knows your full abundance of justice, peace, and life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In the abundant mercy of God, Jesus Christ took on humanity, living our life dying our death, rising as the hope of all people. By his living, dying, and rising, God forgives you all your sins and calls you to new life, abundant with grace and possibility. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to rise as you're able. Let us join our hearts and voices in our gathering song, The Canticle of the Turk. Yes. 
joining us from somewhere else online. Beloved, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is such a wonderful thing to see so many of your faces here this morning. You must have gotten word that today is our annual children's program. We have a wonderful treat for you. Our children will be telling the story of that long ago prophecy, of that promise that seems so distant and yet comes to us in the flesh today. We give thanks for their doing so. A reminder that we will have midweek Advent worship again this Wednesday, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. And then next Saturday, well, this Saturday, excuse me, it's coming up. Saturday is Christmas Eve, and we will be having joint worship with our friends from St. Paul Presbyterian at 6.30 p.m. All are welcome to that. And then one week from today, we will celebrate Christmas Day just a little bit later than usual, 10.30 a.m. Once again, we'll join with our friends from St. Paul. We'll give folks a little time to wake up and have Christmas morning with their families. And finally, as this year comes to a close, we are cognizant that the new year is starting, and that means an annual meeting. I know that's the promise you've all been waiting for. <laughs> we'll be having an annual meeting in... Uh, late January, and as uh, we prepare for that, an invitation, we have had several folks who have been visiting with us. If you would like to talk about membership at St. Martin's, I would love to have that conversation with you. We will be receiving new members in advance of our annual meeting, and so those who are interested, please do let me know. We'll set a time to get together. But without further ado, beloved, let us move into our worship with the lighting of the Advent candle and our children's program. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I invite you to rise as you're able and let us join our hearts and voices in singing, Come Now, O God, as we light our fourth Advent candle.
Mary and Joseph, to shepherds and kings, to the promise of salvation for a world in need. Visit such hope upon us, and that we might know the peace and promise of Emmanuel, the God who is with us and for us. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Beloved, I invite you to be seated as our Christmas program begins. I should have mentioned during our announcements, but I'll mention now, don't worry about getting pictures of all the children together. They will be singing our closing hymn this morning at the close of service. We will invite you, uh, if you would like to take pictures, to linger a bit to get those pictures. For now, I invite you to sit back. Listen to the story and join your voices with us as we sing the coming of Emmanuel. <laughs> from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinus was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to, Ju to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be enrolled with Mary, his, bet his betrothed, who was with child.
Christ in Bethlehem, they were happy. Now we can stop and rest, said Joseph. Now we can lie down and sleep, said Mary. Joseph knocked on the door of the inn. The innkeeper said, no room here, go somewhere else. Then he thought again, you can stay in the stable with the cows and sheep if you want to. So Mary and Joseph rested in the stable after their long journey. And that night, baby Jesus was born. Mary gently laid him in a manger filled with hay. Some shepherds were watching their sheep. Time. 
They did not want anything to hurt the sheep. All at once, something wonderful happened. A multitude of angels appeared in the sky. <laughs>
And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and mirth. Grace and peace be to you, God our Creator and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, over the course of this Advent season, we have been talking about holy disruptions, wonder, and love, and grief. Today we arrive at the most disruptive force of all, hope. Hope is not hope when we can imagine it. Hope is clinging to the possibility of the impossible. The God who loves us enough to take on flesh and be born. A king born not in a castle, but in a manger. Hope is the story of God with us and for us. It is a story these children have told more eloquently than I ever could. Which usually doesn't stop me, but I've been told to keep it two minutes or so. <laughs> Beloved, hope is real. Hope is a possible impossibility. And on Christmas, that hope draws near. It is tangible. We can see it. We can hear it. We can touch it. Hope is alive. In this place, in you, in me, in our hearts. As we come to the manger, may that hope be alive in you and for you. May you carry that hope with you in the holy days to come. May it disrupt you from all of your expectations and lead you into greater joys than you could possibly ask for or imagine. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God our Father, who has brought us again to the glad season when we celebrate the birthday of Jesus, help us to always do things Jesus would have us do. May we always be kind and friendly and show love to people everywhere. Help us to live each day as true followers of Jesus. And may the love and joy of the Christmas season remain in our hearts and the hearts of our families around the world through the coming year. Amen. Amen.
must confess our faith using the words of our Advent Creed. We believe in a God of wonder who created the world and all that is in it, sun and rain, soil and sea, wild things and human beings. Daily this God provides all we need in reckless abundance, and each day we receive God's mercies and new. We believe in a God of love who took on flesh and shared our life as Jesus of Nazareth. Born in Mary, taught by Joseph, sharing meals and memories with his sponsors and followers, healing the sick and suffering heart. We believe in a God who grieves, who shared not just our joys but our sufferings. He was betrayed and abandoned by those whom he loved, condemned and mocked by those who came to save, tortured and killed by the prideful and the powerful. His love was stronger than death, and on the third day he rose to new life and empowered his disciples to share his love until he comes again. We believe in a God of hope, who opens our eyes to new possibilities, who opens our hearts to forgiveness and reconciliation, who enables us to do more than we can ask or imagine on our own. We believe that God is here, among us now, working in us and through us for the sake of the world, and drawing us ever into new life, eternal and abundant. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to be seated for prayers. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for the world that yearns for new hope. God of hope, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment and wisdom to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Take away our fear so that we serve in love, confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. God of hope, awaken to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite humankind in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and habitats in peril due to rising seas and warming temperatures. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of hope, raise up the leaders of every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the work of international organizations that promote peace and human rights. Help us to pray for our enemies. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of hope, come to the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and families experiencing hunger, homelessness, and in Comfort any who are isolated <coughs> or lonely. God, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. God of hope, you are with us in our life together. We give you thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship. And we remember those who cannot be present. Watch over those who travel, heal the sick, and speed their recovery. We pray especially for all those whose names are on our prayer list. And all those we name before you now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. The family of Benjamin Newman. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of hope, you bring life out of death, and you promise to be our God forever. Shine upon the faithful who now rest in the fulfillment of your promise, and bring us also into your beloved reign of peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of our longings, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Amen.
Beloved, let us share that peace with one another. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Prayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, from the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, no matter who you are, what you've done, or what has been done to you, God's grace is for you, and all are welcome to this table. I invite you to be seated now, beloved, and our ushers will invite you forward. Come, for all is ready.
Now, beloved, may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace unto life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to rise as your able benediction. In this season of holy disruption, beloved, may God bless you richly. May God bless you with wonder at mysteries and miracles and mundanity so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with love for those who suffer from pain, rejection, and violence so that you might reach out your hand to comfort and support them. May God bless you with grief for injustice and oppression and exploitation of people so that your grief might spur you to work for justice, freedom, and peace. And may God bless you with hope to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to be seated as we prepare for our closing hymn. Our children, our, uh, our uh, bells, children's bells will be leading us off and our children will be singing the first verse of Joy to the World. I invite you to join in with gusto.
participant in the children's program, I invite you to stand right over there in the stable. If you are taking pictures, I invite you to linger. If you are not, this is your chance to escape. <laughs> Beloved, go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You got that right. <laughs>